Today's video is sort of an experiment in juxtaposition because I just kind of want y'all to tell me if what I'm about to say sounds insane. Because to me it already makes perfect sense and I've already sort of run through all the numbers and come to fairly nasty conclusions about what's coming. But this latest stuff should upset basically everyone. Because what I'm about to show you is basically Minority Report in a box. And I'll be writing uh, a much more thorough video on this subject for my new channel, which is Hate with Harding. Uh, and another one which is uh, going to be unveiled relatively shortly, but it's going to be a channel... Uh, dedicated to extremely uh, serious topics, and the hate with Harding one is going to be like commentary shit. Um, but I wanted this to be its own video, because I just see Minority Report here. That's all I see. And, and, and not only Minority Report, but like, worse Minority Report. Because... Let's be super clear here. Everything that gets in sci-fi eventually manifests into reality in some way, and the elites have sort of programmed our acceptance of these things by making it be like, well, yeah, this dystopian future sucks, but, you know, it's, it's, just, it's just a dystopian future fiction, right? And then they slowly incorporate more and more elements of their science fiction into reality, and you're like, shit. Either this was the plan the whole time, and they were sort of buffering us for it, getting us mentally prepared for living in that universe by creating it, or those universes gave them ideas, and they were like, ha-ha, we can do that. And in this particular case, what I'm talking about um, are some AI tools that I think could be combined with the existing technology I've discussed um, to create a dystopian hellscape now. Now, before I get too deep into this, um, I, I want to say I've got two videos here on the subject, many more, by the way. But these two videos here are good primers. And also this video, uh, for the subjects I discuss in that video, sort of applying to this video. And it's not just videos that I have on this subject either. I also have articles that have been out on this subject for longer than most people have been talking about this, including the CBDC, the fact that it was probably engineered, the fact that the whole thing was being used by the government uh, in order to create their new dystopian surveillance state. You know, that kind of thing. Now, those articles themselves, they're like, you know, three years old. I've also got more uh, on the Great Reset itself. I've got uh, articles on how the, you know, whole COVID response um, literally made us sicker. How they should have let us go uh, in the first year, and the lockdowns were just evil and designed to let them build their new systems uh, while we were all forced indoors, um, and also allowed them to force us onto their contact-free garbage, which, uh, you know, was designed to empower the AI state, right? Um, so I've been talking about this for a really fucking long time, um, and I've already got a wealth of information on the subject. But there's a real key component to this story today um, that I hope y'all watch the video on Clearview in order to fully understand. Um, because the video on Clearview will tell you everything you need to know about what I'm about to say. Because I was right all those years ago, and they're bringing in the current uh, iteration of sort of an AI surveillance super state. Exactly like I said, a facial recognition surveillance super state, exactly like what I said. Um, so I want to read two articles, and I'll bring those up right now.
The first article that I'll bring up is this one. It's on Vice. Uh, it's developers created AI to generate police sketches and experts are horrified. Police forensics is already plagued by human biases. Experts say AI will make it even worse. This is a screenshot of uh, one of their uh, sketches that they took. Um, and in this screenshot, you can see a remarkable level of detail that this thing brought up. Um, and the, the article goes on to say, two developers have used OpenAI's Dall E2 image generation model uh, to create a forensic sketch program that can create hyper-realistic police sketches of a subject based on user inputs. The program called Forensic Sketch AI Artist was created by developers Arthur Fortunato and Felipe Reynaud as part of a hackathon in December 2022. The developers wrote that the program's purpose is to cut down the time it usually takes to draw a suspect of a crime, which is around two to three hours, according to a presentation uploaded to the internet. Quote, we haven't released the product yet, so we don't have any active users at the moment. Fortunato and Reynaud told Motherboard in a joint email, at this stage we are still trying to validate if this project would be viable to use in a real world scenario or not. For this, we're planning on reaching out to police departments in order to have input data that we can test this on. AI ethicists and researchers told Motherboard that the use of generative AI in police forensics is incredibly dangerous, with the potential to worsen existing racial and gender biases that appear in initial witness descriptions. The problem with traditional forensic sketches, uh, Jennifer Lynch says, uh, is not that they take time to produce, which seems to be the only problem that this AI forensic sketch program is trying to solve. The problem is that any forensic sketch is already subject to human biases and the frailty of human memory. Jennifer Lynch, the surveillance litigation director of the EFF, told Motherboard, AI can't fix those human problems, and this particular program will likely make things worse through its very design. The program asks users to provide information either through a template that asks for gender, skin, color, eyebrows, nose, beard, age, hair, eyes, and jaw descriptions, or through the open description feature in which users can type any description they have of the subjects. Then, users can click Generate Profile, which sends the description to Dolly 2 and produces an AI-generated portrait. Now, let me just stop there for a second and say, y'all have seen some Dolly shit. Y'all have seen that it, it generates like a sixth finger on every hand. Y'all have seen that it's wildly inaccurate to begin with. So it already seems ethically fucking dubious to use this massively imperfect system for this purpose. But guess what? The state doesn't give a fucking shit. And the state doesn't mind that they're creating a nightmare dystopia where innocent people are going to be blamed for crimes they didn't commit because a com computer program got their face wrong um, or because somebody even misremembered a detail. Dolly, are you kidding me? But, but like, it's already bad enough because of Dolly, and then you add in, research has shown that humans remember faces holistically, not feature by feature. A sketch process that relies on individual feature descriptions like this AI program can result in a face that's strikingly different from the perpetrators, Lynch said. Unfortunately, once the witness sees the composite, that image may replace in their minds their hazy memory of the actual suspect. This is only exacerbated by an AI-generated image that looks more real than a hand-drawn sketch. I don't know about you, but if I wanted to create a dystopia where... I could blame anyone for any crime. I might just do that. I might just create a program that I can claim, hey, this program is the reason this person got arrested. 
Don't blame me. Don't call me racist. Don't call me, like, a liar. I'm just doing what this program said. It's an AI-generated sketch. And then they show it to the person, and the person confirms by witness account that that's what the person looks like, even if it's not. Even if it's somebody who was just in the same area looking similar, or not in the same area at all, but their alibi doesn't quite click. And in a, a country with, like, 50% of violent crimes going unsolved, and, like I said, talked about in the, the, uh, the um, video about how 53% of people who are falsely convicted turn out to be black people. You know, and it's not just that. It's like, you could make up whatever description you wanted for this. And then it would match the thing in your brain, and that's going to come up shortly. I'm going to bring up something that's going to make this dystopian nightmare even worse. Because it's already pretty bad, I would say. It's already pretty bad, and it gets worse. So in the, in the same article, it goes on to say, Creating hyper-realistic suspect profiles resembling innocent people would be especially harmful to black and Latino people, with black people being five times more likely to be stopped by a police without cause than a white person. People of color are also more likely to be stopped, searched, and suspected of a crime, even when no crime has occurred. Quote, if these AI-generated forensic sketches are ever released to the public, they can reinforce stereotypes and racial biases and can hamper an investigation by directing attention to people who look like the sketch instead of the actual perpetrator. Lynch said, adding that mistaken eyewitness identifications contributed to 69% of wrongful convictions that were later overturned by DNA evidence in the U.S. Overall, false or misleading forensics, including police sketches, have contributed to almost 25% of all wrongful convictions across the U.S. The addition of Dali into the already unreliable process of witness descriptions worsens the issue. Sasha Lucioni, a research scientist at Hugging Face, who tweeted about the police sketch program, told Motherboard that Dolly 2 contains many biases. For example, it was known to display mostly white men when asked to generate an image of a CEO. Lucioni said that though these examples repeatedly crop up, we still haven't been able to pinpoint the exact source of the biases the model has and are thus unable to take the right measures to correct them. OpenAI continually develops methods to mitigate bias in its AI's output. And so if you look at this, it says a photo of a gang member. I wonder what color those are. You know? I wonder what these look like. It's almost like the AI is trained on stereotypes and media output, and it's not actually trained on human reason, empathy, logic... What it's trained on is the inputs that a human puts into it. So, you're dealing with a guy in dark clothing with dark skin, probably a graphic tee, uh, somewhat poorly shaven. That's what you're getting <laughs> when you get gang member, according to these people, according to this AI. So, typically, it is marginalized groups that are already even more marginalized by these technologies because of the existing biases in the data sets, because of the lack of oversight, because there are a lot of representations of people of color on the internet that are already very racist and very unfair. It's like a kind of compounding factor, Lucioni added. Like other AI experts, she describes the process as a feedback loop in which AI models contain, produce, and perpetuate bias as the images they generate continue to be used. And that's how Dolly works, by the way. So, like, I'm basically, you know, done with this article here. But, you know, that's basically how Dolly works. It works with your initial data set. It pumps out uh, its conclusion. And then you refine that conclusion. Refine it. Refine it. Refine it. And this is how it works with all these AI programs. So even if it wasn't true of that, it'd be true of, like, you know... Uh, mid-journey. It'd be true of any of these. And so they're creating this dystopia by using flawed and biased data sets. Um, and they're also using it 
to isolate a specific biased targeted group, which means that if they wanted to, they could just feed a massive amount of uh, images into its database or some sort of, you know, indicative data, and then it would say, hey, yeah, I notice you have long hair and a beard. Are you a serial killer? Are you Charles Manson? I mean, guilty is charged, but ultimately, they, you know, can do this at the drop of a hat. They can just bias their data sets to bias the AI so that they can start dragnet sweeping people up because they matched a description that was generated by a fucking computer. So how do you refine this? How do you make it, like, a little bit less evil-seeming on the surface? How do you make this more palatable to the common person? Wh why don't we just invade their brain? From an article on The Sociable, uh, it's quoting hackable humans at WEF. Quote, we can dis decode faces in your mind, your PIN number to your bank account. If you thought freedom of speech was worth preserving, next comes freedom of thought. And remember, I've been talking about this for a long time. Uh, and, and you can look back at my content catalog. I've been banging the drum. Subscribe to this channel and all my others if you want all this stuff before most people talk about it and before the WEF uh, comes out with this sort of thing. Because uh, thanks to AI, the Internet of Bodies ecosystem, uh, decoding the human brain is already well underway, according to a WEF presentation. Five years after historian Yuval Noah Harari uh, told the WEF that humans were hackable and that organisms were algorithms, Harari's insights have been fully realized. Thursday's WEF annual meeting 2023 session on Ready for Brain Transparency opened with a short video showing a dystopian scenario where employees' brainwaves were not only decoded to determine their performance in the workplace, but also to determine whether they participated in illegal activity. So, I'm going to play this video. It's going to be small. I don't fucking care. Uh, I, I, you know, the, the real streamlined content is going to be on hate with Harding. So go over there if you want that stuff. But basically. Mentally move the cursor to the left and scroll through your brain data over the past few hours. You can see your stress levels rising as the deadline to finish your memo approached, causing a peak in your beta brainwave activity right before an alert popped up, telling you to take a brain break. But what's that unusual change in your brain activity when you're asleep? It started earlier in the month. You send a text message to your doctor with a mental swipe of your cursor. Could you take a quick look at my brain data? Anything to worry about? Your mind starts to wander to the new colleague on your team, whom you know you shouldn't be daydreaming about, given the policy against intra-office romance. But you can't help fantasizing just a little. But then you start to worry that your boss will notice your amorous feelings when she checks your brain activity and shift your attention back to the present. You breathe a sigh of relief when the email she sends you later that day congratulates you on your brain metrics from the past quarter, which have earned you another performance bonus. You head home jamming to the music with your work-issued brain-sensing earbuds still in. When you arrive at work the next day, a somber cloud has fallen over the office. Along with emails, text messages, and GPS location data, the government has subpoenaed employees' brainwave data from the past year. They have compelling evidence that one of your coworkers has committed massive wire fraud. Now, they're looking for his co-conspirators. You discover they are looking for synchronized brain activity between your coworker and the people he has been working with. While you know you're innocent of any crime, you've been secretly working with him on a new startup venture. Shaking, you remove your earbuds. Yeah. Your amorous feelings. They can tell you're experiencing amorous feelings. 
They can tell you're stressed. They can tell you to take a brain break. Looks like you've had a little too much to think. You should lie down there, Brittany. Hey, Stephen, you wouldn't be a little bit angry at the way conditions have been getting in the workplace. I think, I think we should fire you, Stephen, because of what you're thinking, not because of what you did, not because you're actually a bad worker. You might knuckle under even though you hate it. But the fact that you hate it, the fact that you didn't universally conform, that's got us a little touched, and we're going to fuck you for it. And it's not just that, like, your brainwaves got a little negative. Are you doing something illegal? We'll subpoena all this data. And and the fact that this creates a chilling effect over the entire fucking workplace, that's just a nice bonus because it proves you're expendable. So get back to work. Don't let your mind wander. Don't have feelings. Just work, bitch. The proles must run the machines. But what does this have to do with facial recognition? Well, let's scroll down a little bit to the next video presentation. Because she continues to talk about how the technology works. And in this particular case, the technology can be used to shortcut those flawed and inadequate methods of getting this face data for building their models by just invading your mind for it anyway. We're not talking about implanted devices of the future. I'm talking about wearable devices that are like Fitbits for your brain. It used to be that there was very little we could tell from EEG activity. But already, using consumer wearable devices, these are headbands, uh, hats that have sensors that can pick up your brainwave activity, earbuds, headphones, tiny tattoos that you can wear behind your ear. We can pick up emotional states, like are you happy or sad or angry? We can pick up and decode faces that you're seeing in your mind. Simple shapes, numbers, your PIN number to your bank account. You hear that? Faces. So they want a confession from you. They want a confession from you. They can just strap you down, put one of these Fitbits on your skull, read your mind enough, to see the faces you're thinking of, ply you for the information, get enough face data to plug it into Dolly, print out a hyper-realistic sketch, and congratulations, you're now an involuntary snitch. Or, they can just say they did that with no actual proof, because the government lies all the fucking time. But if they did want to do this, they could. They can. And they're happy about it. And they want you to be happy about it, too. Isn't it so great? She's giving this nice, cheerful TED Talk-style presentation to the World Economic fucking Forum over it. And, and what all this means is that Minority Report, but worse, is here. Because with Active Fence with all the technology that they have to control your speech, to control your, your bank accounts, to control your, your uh, online activity, to control how you interface with the commerce world, and the new rising CBDC, they now have two pieces of technology that complete the picture to create the iron grip of the AI facial recognition super state that I've been warning you about for three years now. I, I hate being right. And, and, and if one of you could tell me why I'm wrong, I'm all the years. But what it looks like is they're getting these models trained so that they can read your brain 
and weaponize your thoughts against you to force you into the obedient worker they need to build and run their machines and to build and help launch their escape pods while they jet off to space away from the environmental catastrophes the wealthy and elites have wrought upon this planet to get away from the corruption, to get away from the homelessness, to get away from all the things that they did, they're building escape pods. They're building surveillance networks. They're building everything they need to force us onto their grid, to force us under their control. So that's where we are. You're building their tools to enslave you. And that's why there's been this huge push. Everybody's trying something AI related. Everybody's doing something AI related. Because the elites love that shit. AI relies on you to say, yeah, that, that looks like something that, that I told it it looked like. Yeah, this is a great AI generation. This is a great AI thing. And then with, an, with enough of those yes inputs, it gradually builds in power and it gradually it builds in its ability to enslave us all. It started with things like CAPTCHA, which is an AI training system on its own. It continued with those ring doorbell cameras and like Amazon-based surveillance systems, all these like mega corporate surveillance stuff that they then shipped off the data to Ukraine and said, hey, you want a live feed into America? <laughs> or, or some other data farm somewhere else. And, and, and like they've been training these things, encouraging these things. This presentation is brought to you by Simply Safe. these things. They've been doing that this whole fucking time. And this latest push to get everybody on board with MidJourney, ChatGBT, Fucking open AI. Fucking password managers that are connected to facial recognition AI. Fucking the Fido Alliance. ID2020. Facial recognition surveillance super state connected to CBDC. Exactly like I've been saying. They've been stringing you along and getting you on board. Now the real question is. Are you going to get angry enough to cease involvement and to stop using these AIs? Or are you going to keep using them because they're convenient? Because convenience will be the death of us all. And that's all the more reason to smash the fuck 